The purpose of this video is I want to just take a second and talk a little bit about how we can develop a file structure for our term project websites. Again, these are our websites that are um, going to be websites that um, provide informational content to our users that are wanting more information about their, their shared interests in the, in the movie genre, perhaps. So we're going to be chatting about how uh, the structure of the root folder and perhaps putting some other folders within that root folder to contain all of our content. Uh, we're going to talk about our computer um, that acts as a server that serves up that content in, from the root folder, which then essentially is viewed in the browser. And then we're going to work within that simple file structure and we're going to create um, we're going to just use that, that, that first page that we, once we get it the way that we want it, we're going to use it as a template for the other pages in our site. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and make a very simple menu so that that menu would be on every page. You don't have to recreate the menu on every page. And then we're going to be creating new pages off of that template. So let's take a look at that simple site that we were working with last week as we chatted about Adobe Cooler. I hope you're enjoying using Adobe Cooler to develop a a color palette for your website. So here we just have our root folder and I just have it labeled Hayao for Hayao Miyazaki and so within that folder if you remember last week all we had was just a simple HTML page and then we had our background image. Let's take a look at this page in the browser. So I'm just going to right click it open with Firefox. So This is just our simple page that we made last week. All of our content is um, centered within uh, an absolute position div in the middle of the browser window and we just have this is an h1 and we add some color this is an h2 and then this div container which you guys at this point in the course are most likely just you know putting everything in a table that's fine um, starting uh, now that we're getting into CSS you're going to be using uh, perhaps using an absolute position div to to visually design your page and this div here the background color is um, the background color is just this light yellow. So let's. So what we want to do now that we have our first page created, what we want to do is we want to have a menu up here that can allow us to navigate to our other pages. It's totally up to you on how you want to do your menu. Uh, different students in the courses do their menus in different ways. Maybe you want a left. Uh, menu, maybe you want a top centered navigational menu. I've even had seen students do right menus. Um, either way, you also most likely would want to have a menu of some sort over at the footer so when the user scrolls down to the bottom of the page, they would then have access to um, navigational areas, navigational buttons or tabs or something to go to other areas of the site and not have to scroll back to the top. So um, I would suggest just taking a look at what your other sample sites, example websites are doing. Um, are you finding that the, the movie genre websites you're finding are most, most of them having their menu up at the top of the page? Are they having them over here at the side? Um, and then trying to piggyback off of that because if you drastically change your web design, your, your, what, your site's design from um, what the what the mainstream is there's a chance that one it could be really good because your users might think that wow this is really innovative this is something different but most likely what can sometimes happen is that your users will think oh this isn't the site that I'm looking for because it doesn't look and feel like similar sites or it doesn't look and feel like what they were expecting so let's go ahead and work on that menu so what I want to do is I want to open up my page in notepad plus plus so I'm gonna right click on this open with notepad plus plus so now I have my page in Notepad++. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and make this our home page. So what we can do first off is up here in the uh, the initial uh, initial content up at the very top of your HTML document. Sometimes people call it like the header information. Uh, instead of calling our home because we want this to be our home page. So instead of calling it how, let's call it home. So now we have our home page set up as a title. Now let's go ahead and file save as and we're going to save this as is index and hit save I say this index is what by labeling your files as index that then will um, whenever a browser goes to the root level let's say our website was called howmiyazaki.com whenever they go to that directory that that root level it then the browser knows to automatically open the index page within that root level so you could have hundreds of pages within your root level but as long as you have that 
index page, it will automatically know to open that. Now, I wouldn't suggest having one labeled index.html and also one that's labeled home.html because some browsers actually allow the use of home.html to open up. But it's best practice these days to label it as index.html. So now let's take a look at this in the browser. Open with Firefox. So now we have this is our this is our page that we had a second ago. All this one is just zoomed out a little bit. So essentially we have the exact same page. Now this one's just called index.html and this one was just called HIO. Now we don't want to use this HIO anymore so we can actually go and close this out open up our folder and we don't need this anymore so we're going to go ahead and just hit delete and hit yes. So now our very simple site has index.html and it's now it's now using this image as a background image. So let's talk a little bit about the file structure. Now I know that my website's going to have many, many images. So the first thing we might want to do, because uh, I'm guessing that your sites would do the same thing, is go ahead and create a specific directory for images. Because what we want to do is we want to keep our, uh, our, our site folders as neat and organized as possible. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to new, and I'm going to hit new folder, and I'm going to create a directory just called images. Notice how I'm not using capital letters, special characters, or um, you know because you want to eliminate as much confusion that the browser might have as possible so that's why this is all lowercase I'm not using special characters I'm not having spaces if you have spaces in your file names or even your directory folders the the browser will communicate those as like percent 20 uh, we don't want to do that because that could just uh, cause problems uh, to communicate spaces between uh, names in a file if you wanted to do that you can use just a dash or you can use an underscore so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and as I'm making my app this is the root level of my folder this is like the bottom of my folder and now I want to organize it a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and just take my house uh, background image and I'm just going to move it into my images folder now you notice that when I do that I'm going to come over here and refresh my page and it's broken well it's not really broken it's just it doesn't know where the image is I could right click view page source and it's it now it's just not it's not finding this image here so now what I gotta do is I have to open up my page in notepad plus plus and change where that image is so I just need to tell it I just need to path it to the directory so I'm just gonna write images and just put a forward slash and I'm gonna save it so now I've updated that path so now I can come over here to my page and I'm gonna hit refresh and if we're lucky it should have that image and it does so now we have our folder our root folder of our of our site which is essentially being rendered in the browser or served up from our computer in the browser we have it set up all the way that we want except we are missing that menu and then once we get our menu in then what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to create different pages so let's get started on that simple menu at the top of the page now again, different people might want to set up their menus differently, but what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to have a centered top navigational menu up here at the top. And then my H1 here, that's always going to tell me what page that I'm on. And then I have all of my main content centered uh, for all the rest of my pages. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up Notepad++ again, and I'm going to scroll down and find the top of my container. So basically, uh, here's my container and here's my content. So all of this content here is what's being sh pulled over here. So all of this, uh, all of this here, this is all of my content. And then the container is what centers everything. So what I want to do is I want it to be on top of my content. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with uh, creating my menu by just opening up a paragraph tag. And I need it to be aligned to the center. So I'm going to just type align equals center and then close my declaration and then I'm going to create my first I'm just gonna write home and I'm gonna put a pipe I call them pipes there's probably an official word for it about is my next page so I'm gonna use another pipe movies this could be have all of my Ohio movies listed on it maybe a page called characters another pipe and then contact so that my users can contact me 
and not putting a pipe after that one. So let's save it and take a look. Wait, I almost forgot to close my paragraph. So then I got to remember to close my paragraph. I'm going to save it, bring up my home page, and take a look. So now I have this, the simple startings of a menu up here at the top. Your menus might be a little bit more complex. Some of you might even be wanting to do like a drop-down menu. These, your menu could be uh, cells in a, in a table. That would be totally fine. There's lots of neat things that you can do with that. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create the links for these pages. Now I don't have these pages set up yet, but I'm going to go ahead and create the links for them. I find it easier to sometimes work backwards. I don't want my pipe to be part of the anchor. So I'm going to save that. Let's take a look at it in the browser, see how that looks. So now I just have this simple home, and it's going to home.html. But remember what my, my home page is actually called? It's actually index.html. So oh, I made a mistake, so let's fix that. You'll find that you'll probably make lots of mistakes as you're going through and building your page from scratch. And I also don't want my, I don't know if you remembered, but let me show you. I had that, see that extra little line there, little piece of the line? Um, I'm a little bit particular. I don't like that extra little line there. So all that's, all that's only there because of that little bit of an extra space right here. So I'm going to take that, save it, come back here. Let's refresh my page. So now I click on this and it's actually taking me back to the home. So let's keep working. I'm going to do the same thing for my about page. Save it. Let's take a look. Now I have a link for about. It doesn't take me anywhere because I don't have that page set up yet. And we'll get that done in just a second. So I'm lazy, as you'll find I'm sure most of us are in life. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly make some links. But now I'm just going to go in and change these file names. So about, call this one movies. Call this one characters. Make sure not to spell characters. And I'm going to call this contacts. Now all I have to do is go in and close all of my anchors or my links, whichever way you want to call them. Oh, don't have that extra space because I would add that a little bit of an extra line. Let's save it and take a look at it. So now I have all these pages set up, but they don't go anywhere because I don't have those actual pages made yet. So what we can do is we can actually make our pages from within our folder structure that we've been developing. So all we have to do is we can just right click on a page and hit copy. And then if we paste it, then we just basically get a copy of this index page. So I'll, what I can do is I can actually change this to be called about, make sure caps is off, paste another one in, call this one um, movies, paste another one in, call this characters, paste another one in, and I can call this contact. So now let's refresh our browser. So now when we actually click on about or click on movies, we get those pages. They're not set up exactly the way that we want them, but those pages are actually there.
So let's go ahead and open up our file structure again. Let's open up our about page. So we want this title to say about. And we can go down here to our H1 and we can call it about as well. Let's say we wanted to center it. So now when we go to our about page, we have about centered here. So now let's go through and and also notice the about is also what's about is what's also titling our page. So we can go into our file structure and open up each of our pages in Notepad++. I'm in my characters page, so I call this characters. Scroll down here, find my H1. Open up my contact page. Make sure I save it. Index page is already done. Now I can open up my movies page, my last page. Refresh my browser. So now when I go to these pages, it says movies, or characters, or contact, or home. Let's change, make sure we update that. I can't believe I forgot that. Says home. So now we have our simple site set up. Now again, obviously the content here would all change. Um, on your pages, you might have embedded videos, you might have different movies. Maybe you want to have a different background image for each page. Maybe you're going to have uh, just different content here. On your contact page, actually, this is probably where you're going to have your form. But there's lots of other styles and things that you could do with these links. Um, uh, perhaps you, like I mentioned before, you could have tabs, all that kind of stuff. But again, I just wanted to chat about having a simple, organized file structure. So all of our images for our site are all going to be in the images folder. All of our main pages are here at the root level. If you have, a, if you're actually storing videos on your site and not embedding them, you maybe would you have want to have a a videos folder. Eventually when we actually migrate our CSS to being an external CSS, you're probably going to want to put it in an include folder. I always just call it INCL or INC. Some people call it a, a, a CSS folder. Either way, eventually we're going to be creating a directory within your site and you're going to be call it include or something. And then in there, that's where you're going to have your external CSS. So you can control the visual design on all of your pages rather than having rather than having each of them with this embedded style sheet up at the top. So what we're eventually going to do is we're going to clean this out so where this isn't on every page and we're all going to have them all on one external sheet so we can just make updates to one external CSS and they would then impact all of these different pages. So good luck developing your file structures this week and uh, just let make sure you let the class or, or me know the questions that you have.